I'm going to prepare a piece of brisket for the oven and I'm going to use it for two different dishes. Um, gorgeous piece of British beef. Uh, brisket is a, um, a slightly cheaper cut of beef but fantastic flavour but it does need slow cooking. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I've got a medium saucepan and I've got some British rapeseed oil and I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in the pan and I'm going to sear it on all the sides to keep the juices in. Uh, it's going to have a long slow cook but what you want to do is retain all the, the juices in the meat. So I'm going to pop that into my pan and while that's coming up to temperature I've already washed and um, taken the larger outer leaves off a leek so I'm going to chop that up all really roughly because this is going to create the um, gravy for both my uh, pearl, uh, pearl barley and brisket cobbler and uh, roasted beef so I'm going to go on and just finish it off in a roasting tin, half of it as a normal joint. This is just uh, just chopping this roughly. And while the beef's browning, I'm just going to tip the uh, leek into a bowl. I've also got some shallots. I'm going to put two sweet shallots into the gravy. Again, I'm just going to roughly chop them. into my bowl So I'm also going to put in some herbs, so bay and thyme in this instance. And I've got a handful of black peppercorns. I'm going to leave them whole. Um, I've got probably, I'll probably put about eight, about eight black peppercorns in. So the beef doesn't need very long on each side because it's only being seared so I'm going to turn it over and this is the pearl barley that I'm going to um, use in my cobbler I'm not going to put it in until the um, beef has been cooked because it will cook down too far and go glutinous and what I want is to use it as a thickener and to give it a nutty texture but not to um, make the gravy really really thick. Not adding any salt at this stage because it draws the moisture out of the beef but I'm going to put a really good sprinkle of black pepper in and keep turning it. I'm also using one of these, so I've got um, homemade stock in the freezer and um, you can also obviously get stock that's been pre-made at the supermarket, but a stock pot in this for me is fine. I like, I like a, a stock sheet and then I've got 500 millilitres of water that I'm going to put with it. So we're going to sort of steam it rather than roast it. Super. So that's browning on the last last side. So to that then, because it's on full temperature, I'm going to put the herbs 
and the onions. I'm going to cook it on a low heat for about two and a half hours. I'm going to pack the vegetables around the beef because I want, what I want is it to be hot when it goes into the oven so that it hasn't got to go up to temperature. I've put all of the leeks and onions in there. I'm going to put my black peppercorns in. Just a couple more. And then... I'm going to put my stock pot in. Make sure it's bubbling well. Then my water. And at this stage, I'm now going to put in plenty of salt. Bear in mind there is some in the stock pot as well, so uh, not to put too much in. Then I'm going to cover it with foil. And just go away and forget about it. And come back to it in a couple of hours. Yesterday, while the oven was on, I cooked a lovely piece of brisket. So brisket needs a long, slow cook, but it's got a fantastic flavour. So I'm going to have half for lunch today, or probably not half, but I'm going to have a safe half for lunch today. And then the other half, I'm going to make a fantastic brisket barley cobbler. So I cooked the brisket down in a really good beef stock, some leeks, a couple of mushrooms, some shallots and some water, lots of salt and pepper and a bouquet garni. I'm going to half the meat so this has had about four hours in the oven. That half I'm going to put in a roasting pan and I'm going to finish that later but this half once I've removed the binding string I'm going to chop into into small chunks that sort of size piece I'm looking for and this is preparation for the sauce that I'm going to make later on just move that out of the way And this absolutely falls apart, so it's a very tender cut of meat uh, once it's been cooked for a long period of time. The smell is absolutely delicious. And it remains an, a nice pink colour. It doesn't overcook like roasting beef because the moisture is retained because of the fantastic stock and you're infusing it with lots of different flavours. So I've got all that gorgeous beef there that I'm going to put into this bowl and I'm going to keep that to one side. And then in here, you can see we've got that fantastic rich sauce. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into a saucepan and I'm going to thicken it slightly with some butter and some plain flour. I'm going to um, cook it down slowly and then I'm going to add it to the meat and put it into my pie dish. There is a little residue of fat here, not too much fat off the brisket, but while it's cold, what I'm going to do is get a spoon and I'm going to take away all of that, uh, that fat residue off the surface of the sauce, which will just leave you with a, a beautiful fragrant gravy. After I cooked my brisket, I had about a pint of cooking stock in my pan, to which I added an extra pint of water and then I thickened it with something called a bermanier and it's a paste made with equal parts of butter and flour. This I whisked into the gravy to give it a sheen and a really nice unctuous thickness. I also added to that the pearl barley, about a third of a cup of pearl barley and this is a smaller barley. It does come in various sizes and so this is a pinhead pearl barley. 
as I said, that will give the, the sauce a great nuttiness and also work as a thickener for my gravy. And I've popped the gravy on top of the beef ready for the scone topping. Into my bowl, I've already weighed out eight ounces of plain flour. And chilling in the fridge, I've got half a pint of milk and I've got two ounces of butter. As with any other pastry dish, you want to keep the ingredients as cold, cold as possible until the last minute. So I'm going to cut the butter into my flour and this stage is very similar to making a classic pastry crumb. So putting a scone topping on a pie filling, when it cooks, you'll get a really crispy top to the scone and then underneath, it will almost have a dumpling consistency because the um, as the, the scone rises, it will absorb the beautiful gravy and the flavours and you'll get a soft, fluffy, dumpling-like scone. So this doesn't take too long at all. And, and with, um, with a scone, you want to work it even less than pastry. So it needs to be really light and worked relatively quickly. So what I don't want this to happen with this is that the butter starts to melt and go claggy. I'm going to be fairly quick with this. Maybe because it'll bore you to tears, but otherwise also this will go soft. And we're there already, so that's that's not taking long at all. You have only got two ounces of butter in this. Great. So to that, I'm going to add fresh thyme. And I've already taken that off the stalk. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of mustard powder just to give a nice back note. It goes really well with the brisket. As a raising agent, I'm going to use baking powder. I can get into it. And I'm going to put three level teaspoons of baking powder. You don't need a huge rise. If I'd be putting slightly more in if I were making a sweet scone or a cream tea. So I'm going to put in three level teaspoons of baking powder. And then I'm going to just amalgamate all of those dry ingredients. And what we need with the scone is that... Uh, we need to put the wet ingredients in all at once, unlike making pastry where you, uh, you put it in gradually. So I'm going to use a quarter of a pint for eight ounces of milk and I'm going to use half a pint of milk for um, 12 ounces. I'm going to work that together quickly. A little bit more. And get my hands in and gently amalgamate it.
ensuring that I get all of the bits out of the bottom of the bowl. put a little bit of flour on my work board not so much that it's going to change the consistency of the dough just enough to stop it sticking then I'm going to gently just pat the scone dough down it's entirely up to you how thick you make your scones Excellent. I'm going to just gently roll the dough. And then with a glass or a cutter, I'm going to cut some discs out. You want to cut through, but you don't want to twist the glass too much because that seals the edges of the scone and the scone then won't rise. Out of that mixture so far, I've got five scones. Six. Seven, my last one, eight. I'm just going to place the scones And these will fluff up in the oven, so it doesn't matter if they overlap slightly. And that's my scone topping.